And as energy prices continue to rise, that is going to impact consumer discretionary spending. And I think we are going to get back up to that 100 to 120 per barrel. But it's not going to happen today. We may see a little bit of a pullback, and we are going to be dealing with higher energy prices in recessionary environments. So I think that there is much more downside for this market. I anticipate that the oil price movement that we've seen in the last week and a half is going to be very significant coming in a month. So remember, we have the consumer price index coming out this week on Thursday, and that is a measurement for September. But my concern is that if oil prices remain elevated for the duration of the month, and I think that they will, probably around that $90 floor, that has the capacity to add roughly 0.5 to 0.7% month over month for the inflation uh, reading for CPI in November when the October report comes out. And if that's the case, all hell could break loose. Because at that point, it is further evident that the Federal Reserve does not have control of the inflationary cycle. I think they need to go higher. I think that we're gonna ultimately see this move to around 5%. And then this market will really start to panic if we do not see any additional abatement in the jobs market. And we could be looking at a 5.5% move. Already we're seeing big bets being made at 5%. In the CME Fed Watch, I would anticipate that these can this can move even further. I know that there's a lot of people who think that the, bo the bottom is in. I'm telling you, the bottom is not in. This market has a little bit ways to go. So how do you trade this? Well, we have inverse ETFs, and I've talked about PSQ. I've talked about SH. I've talked about SARC. That's the inverse for the ARK Investment Fund, uh, ARK Innovation ETF, and RWM. That's the inverse for the Russell 2000. So you can buy the fund and it, it will go, it'll go higher if the market moves lower. SH is my preferred thing to trade right now. SH is effectively the inverse ETF for the S&P 500 ETF. That's the SPY. So what we're looking for here, you can either buy the fund itself, SH, right? It's up now to 17.19. And I have an open position on this in the world's biggest trade. We're up more than 60%. We opened it on Thursday. You can buy the fund, 1719, or you can buy in the money calls for SH. And that has uh, still a relatively attractive um, spread right now. So I'm currently in the eight, the 16 and the 18 for SH. I own the I own the 16 for October 21st, and I sold the $18 call as for a little bit of uh, protection and also to effectively define what the total upside is for that trade, which I believe is 263% if it hits 1805 on or before the 21st of next week. You can buy puts on stocks, you can buy puts on ETFs, you can buy puts on the indices, but I wanna note that the VIX is above 32. And if that's the case, the cost of buying these puts goes higher. So if you get any contraction in the uh, volatility in the next month, that can drive down the price of the contract. And also any move to the upside would impact your trade as well. It's very expensive. And you have to remember that the reason that these puts exist are not so that you can speculate to the downside. It's so that other funds can buy insurance. Puts are insurance. It gives somebody the right, but not the obligation, to sell an asset at a specific strike price on or before that expiration date. That's really important to note. So right now, people are paying more and more money for that insurance, and you can get swept up in that pretty quickly. The final way to trade are within these leveraged ETFs. So we've got the SQQQ. SQQQ, that's the triple bear ETF for the Qs. SOXS is the triple uh, bear ETF for semiconductors. Remember the heart of the tech sector. SPXU is the leverage for the SPX. And TZA, which is one of my favorites, that is the triple leveraged bear ETF for the Russell 2000. Now I wanna point something out. These are things that are really, really good for day trading, right? Day trading. So right now, if you're using volume-weighted average price, 
using VWAP, you can trade the SQQQ and you would trade it just like any other trade that Kenny is doing. And you can see it's broken above the volume weighted. It bounced around today and you would effectively just remain in this position during the day. If it breaks under VWAP, you get out. But today you can see it's remained above in the range for the bulk of the day. Had a nice move here from about 60.56 up to nearly $62. That little bit of leverage that exists in that fund can let you day trade. You don't need to go out and buy calls and puts on this stuff. And you definitely don't want to be holding a lot of this stuff overnight. They present themselves as good day trade vehicles. In rare instances, will I hold a lot of some of this stuff overnight? And I do buy calls on some of this stuff at the beginning of a negative momentum cycle, or I buy uh, puts on it at the beginning of a positive momentum cycle, and I'll buy calls on it at the beginning of a negative cycle. But that can be very tricky as well, trying to time this. The other way to trade in this environment is post earnings momentum. So what I've been saying all year is that the Fed is 97% of this market. The correlation between the Federal Reserve's purchasing of assets, treasury bonds, and other things on its balance sheet it's a very direct casual relationship before, between that and the performance of the S&P 500. And you are smart enough to recognize that going all the way back to the beginning of November of last year, everything that the Fed has said or done or clue that, they has, that has been sought after, the market has moved as a response. This market has peeled off the way it has this year because the central bank needs to take action on inflation, because interest rates are rising. The Fed is driving 97% of this market. And what's crazy about this is that if you go back and you look at some of the data and the correlations going all the way back to 2009 through 2020, there were people who were saying that the Fed was 93% responsible for every return on the S&P 500, 93% of the returns. And the reason was Fed's monetary policy. What are they selling into the, what are they buying? What are they doing with interest rates? 0% interest rates Well, now we are moving in the other direction. And the rest of the market is earnings driven. So we are gonna start earnings season on Friday. We are going to trade momentum after companies report. We are not going to buy calls and puts before an earnings report. That is not a good idea because it is very expensive to buy calls and puts before these big earnings announcements. What we look for is companies that are hitting new 52 week highs or new 252 week lows after an earnings report, and then we look to trade the momentum of those individual stocks. That's when things are going to be very, very liquid. We'll use volume weighted average price, and we'll use calls and puts on the back side of these earnings reports. That is all part of what we are doing at the world's biggest trade. We are still trading live every day at 1 p.m. We do our market recaps. We talk about momentum. We break it down. And we had a really damn good week last week. Brandon, do you want to show them the graphic? Yeah, I mean, Scott put this in chat as well. Here's the graphic. This is what happened last week over in the world's biggest trade. CNBC gives us fluff and all that kind of stuff, but you give us the real stuff and make that very palpable for us to use in, in, in what we want. So I got to ask the chat a question right here because I think this is important. You guys have watched Garrett trade. You guys have seen the trades that he's done. Look below me. You can see his portfolio over the last week. Why aren't you in the world's biggest trade? Right now, we're running an offer, a monthly offer in the world's biggest trade that gets you in there for under $200, which is insanity for what Garrett offers. A lot of people also don't know that you go live for an extra 30 minutes to three hours mm -hmm. daily in the world's biggest trade, giving them trades off of what's going on. And you talked about Friday 100%. coming up. There's some big stuff happening this week. You're not going to want to miss this, guys. Why aren't you in the world's biggest trade? I'm not kidding. Why aren't you in the world's biggest trade? Garrett, you're crushing it, man. Thanks, man. Sign up. And again, it's going to be a very busy week. We went long last Monday when everybody else was blood in the streets, freaking out. We knew that things were oversold. We used momentum. We took that. And then we flipped it over to the other side and we went short on Thursday leading into Friday. Again, there's going to be a lot of opportunity. We talk about how to trade this every single day. I'm going to show all the different momentum indicators. Again, just a quick recap uh, tomorrow. But I want to see you in the room. All right, everybody, thanks so much. I will be over at the WBT right now. We're going to be going for about 45 minutes today talking about our big win on SH. Have a great day, everybody.